Adventurers, just when I thought that we couldn't get any more news for Albion Online, patch number 3 has just been officially announced on the test server, and not just announced, but also launched over there. It's a pretty lengthy patch, or at least much lengthier than I expected, that has some very interesting changes coming to Holy Staff, Maces, Shapeshifter Staffs once more, Spears, Swords, and a lot of other cool stuff. So Adventurers, if you are ready for this, just buckle up, get yourself your favorite potion, or whatever you Miyamoto's prefer to drink, and enjoy the show. So, let us start from the beginning. Adjustable mobile player display limit. With this patch, mobile users with sufficiently powerful devices can adjust the amount of fully rendered characters visible on screen at one time. That's nice. Before characters displayed as dummies, you know, those uh, yellow things that just move around and uh, there's no animations, nothing like that. Yeah, that's, that's what they're talking about here. This was previously limited to 20. Okay, that's super low. 20 players? I did not know it was so low. 20 players? So, what do you do in a ZVZ then? Because in the ZVZ you have 20 people with you in your party, and then the enemy. Wait, wait, what? How did you ZVZ on mobile? Well, I guess you don't ZVZ on mobile, to be fair. But I did not know about this, that's super low. But now players with higher performance devices can display a larger amount, providing improved visuals and information in large scale battles. Also, oh, this was actually a problem. Wow. <laughs> this limit is adjustable in the settings menu. That's a super good change. And in my opinion, that should have been the case from the start. Changes. On the final invasion day of a guild season, a territory stored raw energy is now paid out the moment the territory is conquered in order to prevent territory trading afterwards. That's all right. Combat balance changes. The part we've all been waiting for. Let's be honest now. Uh, first of all, Holy Staffs. The ascended ability from all Holy Staffs is the passive. I think it's the third one. The duration of the passive itself has been increased by one second. Pretty nice. Now, uh, if you are like me and you probably don't know exactly what this passive does, well, let's find out together. The Ascended. I think it's the one that prevents you from being interrupted, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. Uninterruptible for 2.5 seconds. Can you imagine that being paired up with this? Okay, that's super interesting. That is super interesting and I'm really curious to see how that's gonna play out uh, in the Hellgate's meta. And besides that, we also have the Holy Explosion from the Great Holy Staff, which has increased targets from 5 targets to 10 targets. I mean, this staff is pretty good in small scale and stuff like that. Not the best, definitely, but not the worst either. It's, uh... Yeah, no, I, I think it's a well-needed buff, actually. It's not bad, it's not bad. Alright, Maces, Sacred Ground. This is the silencing cue from all Maces. The duration has been reduced by one second. And Deep Leap from the one-handed Mace. This is super interesting. The damage has been buffed. And if you listen quietly when I read those words, just, just shut up for a second. Yeah, can you hear that? Coco is rejoicing. Coco is rejoicing. His mace is getting buffed. Shapeshifter staffs. The wild onslaught from the primal staff. The dash can now be interrupted by forced movement effects. Yet another set of nerfs coming to shapeshifter staffs. And the tear open from the blood moon staff. The healing puddle is buffed. Yo! The blood moon staff has been buffed. By, I mean, it's not that much. But it's, it's nice. Five more HP. I mean, again, not the biggest change. I guess, you know, this is like that type of change that the devs add over there so that Mogden cannot say that they're just nerfing shapeshifter stabs, you know? Like, it's not the biggest change, but at least it's not a nerf. So, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat happy about this. Man, lo look at how our minds work, man. This is... This is why we get fooled, man. You know, we have we have a, a corporation that's trying to shove poop down our throats. And we're like, oh, no, please, please stop shoving the poop, please, please. And all of a sudden, they just give us a spoonful of poop. You know, they don't shove poop. They just give us a spoonful. And we're like, oh, that's so good. Thank you so much. No, it's still poop. We shouldn't accept this. It, it's a very small change. Like, look at how big this nerf is. The W of the bear staff that can be interrupted by force movement effects. Uh, aka firewall and look at how small this is you know what i mean it's, it's just like yeah, yeah you know let's just have that over there but hey it's not bad then we have some spears changes coming to glaive the fling ability from the gray uh, will have a one meter increased range not too bad not too good either the crescent slash from clarent blade has been reduced in range why like why M maybe i don't know but it, it, is clarent blade good anywhere I, I guess it's decent in group play but 
decent and good are two very different things, are they not? I don't fully understand why they nerfed it. At the same time, if you guys know what I've always been saying, which is the fact that sometimes certain swords can have higher range than certain bows, I can kind of understand the nerf. M maybe that's why they nerfed it to make swords feel more like melee weapons and bows feel like more ranged weapons. Maybe that's the case. In which case, that's not that bad. Alright, Hellfire Hands, let's see. Will Equat be happy? Resilience penetration from 35% to 20%. Alright, not bad. Not too big of a change in my opinion. Helmets. Emergency shield from Guardian Helmet has increased targets from 5 to 10. Now I'm curious about something. Dear Albion OGs, maybe my memory fails me over here, so that's why I want to ask you as well. Wasn't Guardian Helmet like this at the start? You know when Guardian Helmet used to not only give you the shield, but also heal you? Or was it just a heal? I don't remember if it was just a heal or heal and a shield. But when that happened, didn't we cover 10 targets with that shield or heal? Uh, that's kind of how I remember, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe my uh, memory fails me here. All right. Then we have the Fire Breath from Mage Cow. The damage per take has been increased by 44. So overall, we have a total buff of 16 more damage. I mean... The thing with Mage Cowl is not the lack of damage. The thing with Mage Cowl is how bad it is compared to how Mage Cowl used to be. If you guys remember, Mage Cowl used to give you a buff basically on your character that would add a dot on the first enemy that you attacked. It did not matter if it's an auto attack or, or what it was. And Mage Cow was a staple for the one shot letter build. Basically you were using Mage Cow with Clevic Robe, with Royal Sandals, with Blood Letter and with uh, Crypt Candle if I remember correctly. Oh and with Poison, the old Poison that used to deal a ton of damage. I mean the Poisons right now are somewhat similar to what they were before. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, with this build, with Mage Cow, the old Mage Cow, you were able to melt people down. Same thing applied to builds like Werbo. A build like Werbo in Corrupted Dungeons died whenever Mage Cow was nerfed. Because Werbo kind of relied on that dot damage to keep the enemy in combat and so on and so forth. And nowadays you don't see many Werbos in Corrupted Dungeons specifically for this reason. It's the same reason you don't see a lot of uh, blood letters in Corrupted Dungeons or in open world uh, ganking, solo ganking and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, I'm just talking about solo ganking. When I said ganking, I mean only solo ganking. In group ganking, they still have a place because of the one-shot potential after the enemies fall below 40%. In the anti undead cape. All right, and then last but not least, we have some mount changes, which are pretty interesting, I guess. Let's see this. So the crystal beam from the roving bastion. Whoever uses this, I mean, I guess maybe it's useful in ZVZs. The cooldown has been increased by two seconds. The range has been decreased by four meters, and the debuff duration has been reduced by two seconds. So overall, a nerf. I'm guessing maybe it's something strong for ZVZs, but. I don't know exactly what, I'm not aware of it. And then we have some fixes, let's read through them together and see if there's anything interesting. Fixed an issue where incorrect quantity of fire spirit pause was shown when salvaging expert primal staff, alright. Fixed an issue where uh, white tiger mount skin was not visible. What? Bro, mobile has a ton of problems. For, first we got this, we cannot see more than 20 players. First we have this, and then I hear that you cannot see one of the rarer skins. That's cool, that's cool. Fixed an issue where Twitch drop notification would persist even after the rewards were claimed. Alright, and improved support for foldable phones, allowing screen changes during runtime. Huh, that's interesting, I never thought about that, but, but yeah, actually games have to take that into consideration nowadays. Because people have foldable phones. That's cool, that's cool. Adventurers, overall, this is what's coming in the next patch. If you want to test any of those changes, they are available to you all on the test server. Overall, some pretty exciting stuff. I'm kind of excited about the glaive changes. I'm super curious to see if it's going to make a comeback in Corrupted Dungeons, though I don't know fully if it is. Glaive used to be strong at some point, but not that strong. I'm kind of interested about the Blood Moon staff changes, and I'm more, more than interesting when it comes to the Ascended changes for the Holy Staff passive. I think that's going to be a big game changer for Hellgates and stuff like that, and at the same time that kind of leaves me to wonder when are we going to finally buff Nature Healing? Because let's be real, Nature Healing is um, inferior in every single way to Holy Healing. Straight up. It is what it is. But what do you guys think about this? What are your favorite changes and what other changes you wish you would have seen in this patch? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I wish you safe travels.